controversial Indian woman of her times, a Sanskrit scholar, a social reformer, a Christian convert who tried to improve women's life with her unique life path. Meet Pandita Ramabai Saraswati. Pandita Ramabai had caused ruckus at a sabha in Pune, where she said, and I quote, women can do anything a man can except drink alcohol. Pandita Ramabai broke nearly every rule and tradition that confined the life of an upper caste Hindu woman in the 19th century India. She was the rare woman who had learned Sanskrit because Sanskrit study was reserved for Brahmin men. The rare Brahmin woman to marry out of caste. The rare widow who remained in public view, defying customs. And the rare Indian woman to decide on her own to convert to Christianity. At a time when women were confined to their homes, Pandita Ramabai was an outspoken advocate of women's education as well as participation in public affairs. She traveled across India, giving lectures on women's rights. She studied in Britain and the United States, gave lectures in Japan and Australia, and taught Sanskrit as well as her mother tongue, Marathi. Most remarkably for her time, Pandita Ramabai charted these paths as a single woman and a single mother. Pandita Ramabai Saraswati was born on 23rd of April 1858 in South Karnataka, which was then part of the Madras Presidency. Here her father, Anand Shastri Dongre, he had built an ashram right in the middle of the forest. It was a residential school where Brahmin boys were taught Sanskrit. In presenting Ramabai's life, we cannot ignore the legacy of her father. Her father led an unconventional yet eventful life. And his life definitely influenced his daughter's future choices as well as her mindset. In order to understand Ramabai's future activities, I'll briefly cite some biographical information about her father. Anand Shastri Dongri was born in a Chitpavan Brahmin family. But he did not follow his caste rules rigidly. Anand Shastri was trained as a Sanskrit scholar by Ram Chandra Shastri Sathe. Mr. Sathe was also the teacher of the last Peshwa of the Maratha Empire. Who was he? Bajirao II. During his years at Pune, Anand Shastri heard Varanasi Bai. Varanasi Bai was Peshwa's wife. She was reciting Sanskrit verses in the Peshwa's palace. This was surprising because it was breaking all the caste rules as the knowledge of Sanskrit, the divine language, was reserved only for the Brahmin men. This fact deeply impressed the young Anand Shastri Dongre. The year was 1818 and the Peshwas lost political power. Anand Shastri then came back to his home and tried to teach Sanskrit to his first wife. But this attempt immediately failed. Why? Because the members of the family objected. Why? Because it went against the then caste rules. Or should we say it went against the existing caste rules prevalent at that time. But Anand Shastri succeeded. Succeeded in this task with his second wife, the nine-year-old Lakshmi Bai. And Lakshmi Bai is the mother of Pandita Ramabai. Anand Shastri Dongri married Lakshmi Bai when he was 44. Lakshmi Bai, she was the daughter of another traveling Brahmana pilgrim who was looking for husbands for his two daughters. Such a marriage with a huge age gap was not uncommon in that society where Brahmin girls, they were obliged to get married before puberty and widowers could remarry even late in life while widows of any age were strictly forbidden to get married again, even if they were the child widows. Ramabai's father, 
he used to perform expensive religious rituals. This led to worsening of the financial status of the family. This also ruined his health. Ramabai later criticized these meaningless rituals, but she would always appreciate two very important and progressive aspects of her father's thought. Number one, his insistence on giving his daughters an education. And number two, his decision not to arrange a child marriage for Pandita Ramabai. Now listen to me carefully. If child marriages were common, then why did Ramabai not marry in her childhood? Because her elder sister's child marriage failed. Her elder sister, Krishnabai, she was married to a boy, but with an agreement. What was this agreement? That the boy will stay with the bride at her place and be educated with her. But as soon as the ceremony got over, the boy was taken home by his parents and spent the following years without cultivating his faculties and basically doing nothing. 13 years later, he went to claim his wife and sued the bride's family in the court. Why? Because they had refused to let their precious daughter go and live with such a worthless man. He won the case and the young woman was obliged to go with him. But very soon, Ramabai's sister died due to cholera. When Pandita Ramabai was eight, her father was almost 70. So the task of educating Ramabai was now carried out by Ramabai's mother, Lakshmi Bai. What Ramabai had to do, memorize thousands of lines of Sanskrit texts because printed books were not available. This is where it becomes interesting. Ramabai received peculiar and unconventional kind of education. Received education at home, was taught by her parents, and this unconventional kind of education differentiates Ramabai from other contemporary Brahmin men like M.G. Ranade, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, K.T. Tilang. All of them went to regular schools, studied English as their families wanted them to pursue a career in either administration or judiciary. Ramabai and her brother, she also had a brother, the name was Srinivas. Ramabai and her brother Srinivas, they were not trained to become professionals. They followed what was traditionally meant for Brahmanas, which is teaching and worship. The family was staying in Madras Presidency. The place was hit by a severe famine. The family suffered from malnutrition as well. As they did not want to beg for food, they started eating leaves of forest trees. Anand Shastri decided to take his life by performing something called Jal Samadhi. What is Jal Samadhi? Basically a practice which consists of drowning oneself but does not count as suicide. But he was stopped by his son. His son now decided to do menial work to support his family. Despite this initiative, the weak and aged Anand Shastri died of exhaustion in the year 1877. And his wife Lakshmi Bai followed him a few months later. She died as she couldn't bear the death of her husband. But she also died of starvation. The family was starving for food. The year was again 1878 when the siblings, Ramabai and her brother, visited Calcutta. And here the cultural and the intellectual elite of Calcutta welcomed them. And in fact, praised Ramabai's knowledge of Sanskrit, the knowledge of Hindu religious texts. She was later examined by a group of Sanskrit scholars who awarded her the titles of Pandita, which basically means a woman scholar. The title of Saraswati, the goddess of learning. During her stay in Bengal presidency, Ramabai was asked to give both public lectures on women and private speeches for women in their homes. And her main sources were the Hindu texts 
and the mythology. She was also introduced to the Brahmo Samaj of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. It was during her stay in Bengal that Ramabai had her first encounter with Christianity. She was invited to attend a Christian service, but this event did not impress her much. She was also gifted a Sanskrit Bible. Even this did not impress her. Another very important social reformer of that time, Bengali Keshav Chandra Sen. Keshav Chandra Sen encouraged Pandita Ramabai that you should also study the Vedas. Initially, Ramabai thought that Vedas are prohibited for women. But then she also read Upanishads. And slowly and steadily, she felt a general dissatisfaction with her religion. But then, in the year 1880, her brother also died. The sudden death of her brother further alienated Ramabai from her religion. Ramabai was 22, completely alone in the world, without any economic support. Her brother, Srinivas, had a friend, Bapu Bipin Bihari Das Medavi. He proposed Ramabai for marriage. She accepted. But Bipin Bihari was a Bengali. He was not a Brahmin. This was an inter-caste marriage. The society was not receptive to the idea of an inter-caste marriage. The young couple then moved to Silchar, which is in Assam. And in 1881, one year later, the couple welcomed their daughter, Manorama. But then tragedy struck Ramabai again. She was 23 when Bipin Bihari, her husband, died of an illness, leaving her alone with their year-old daughter, Manorama. Talking about the contributions of Pandita Ramabai, three things need to be kept in mind. Number one, the establishment of Arya Mahila Samaj. Number two, the establishment of Sharda Sadan and Ramabai's various literary works. Ramabai's actual reform or reform career started with the setting up of the first organization for women in Maharashtra, named Arya Mahila Samaj. The year was 1882. The place, Pune. What was the objective of the society? The aim was to discuss and eradicate customs like child marriage. The cruel treatment that was given to the child widows and the widows in general. The lack of education for women. The association used to conduct meetings and organize lectures on various topics concerning women. And when women meet and interact with other women, it also establishes a support network which ultimately benefits the women. This incredible first attempt promoted by a woman to discuss with women about social reforms concerning women was revolutionary. But what was the reaction of the general society towards the establishment of a, such an institution? The establishment of Arya Mahila Samaj was welcomed by liberal figures such as M.G. Ranade. But it was also criticized. It received strong criticism from someone like Bal Gangadhar Tilak. Bal Gangadhar Tilak was Pandita Ramabai's harshest critics and opponents throughout her long career in the social field. In Kesari, which is the Marathi newspaper which was launched by Bal Gangadhar Tilak, in the year 1882, Kesari published an opinion piece which read, and I'm quoting from the newspaper, in real life, it is the task of men to eradicate these and many other evils and customs prevalent in our society. Women cannot interfere with them for many years to come, even if they are the panditas and have reached the ultimate stage of reform. Our women will have to submit to male control for a long time to come. This was the opinion piece published in Kesari in 1882. With the Arya Mahila Samaj, 
what did ramabai want she wanted to raise women's awareness about their unhappy domestic and social conditions urging them to free themselves from the male oppression but 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 the social experiment of arya mahila samaj did not find the actual support it needed to flourish you need people support for success maybe the time was not yet ripe for such a feminist organization unfortunately not only the brahmin men but also women disregarded and criticized ramabai's radical views of that time but one of the most important and pivotal events in ramabai's life and career is her first overseas journey to england in the year 1883 in april she has described this journey in a long letter addressed to mr s p kelkar mr kelkar he was the secretary of mumbai's prarthana samaj he was also a dear friend of ramabai this letter can be considered one of the first examples of travelogue written in modern marathi the letter starts with ramabai listing all the reasons for her coming to england look at the courage of ramabai she traveled alone with her baby daughter and only one female friend who was this friend anandi bai bhagat so ramabai her daughter manorama and her friend anandi bai bhagat traveled to london in london she met sister geraldine with whom she had a long but difficult relationship all her life in london she drafted a petition that to in marathi and the title of this petition was the cry of indian woman this petition was in marathi in this petition she described the oppression of indian women in all their stages of life she wanted to have this petition translated into english so that it can be brought to the attention of queen victoria and other eminent political figures of the time so in london basically she spoke of the problems and the issues faced by the women in india one reason why she left for england with her daughter in 1883 was to study medicine but she was told that she could not become a doctor why because of her increasing deafness instead she enrolled in a teaching program at the cheltenham college cheltenham ladies college where she taught marathi and sanskrit but ramabai stay in england was marked by depression some say it was a consequence of few troubling events event number 1 ramabai's failure to enter the medical college because of her severe as well as incurable deafness event number 2 the early hardships of her life lost her parents sister brother husband starvation event 3 anandi bai her friend committed suicide by consuming poison rama bai now along with her daughter manorama embraced christianity they were both given new christian names mary rama for rama bai and manorama baby for manorama sister geraldine a key figure in rama bai's life she served as witness and became rama bai's spiritual godmother now let's look at something else pandita rama bai's relationship with christianity her relationship with christianity was a long and a complex one influenced by many factors on one hand was disillusionment with hinduism on the other hand the attraction of a new faith and this new faith christianity promised salvation to all without discrimination rama bai saw her own conversion as a protest against the inherent discrimination against women in hinduism rama bai's conversion it mostly received as expected 
negative reactions, strong reactions in India, especially by the press. Jyoti Rao Phule, another very important social religious reform leader of that time. He was perhaps the only supporter. He congratulated Ramabai on her conversion, citing her as an example of freedom against what he called the oppressive practices and norms inflicted on women by Hinduism. But something interesting, although Ramabai embraced Christianity, yet she continued to wear Indian dress, yet she remained a vegetarian. She started questioning Christianity as well, and this angered the Christians. They felt, here is a convert. Instead of blindly following and embracing the new religion, Ramabai is engaging in a theological debate. But her critics failed to understand the real Ramabai. Ramabai was rational. It was rationalism which made her reject the Hindu faith. And the same rationalism is ensuring that she does not fully accept the new religion. Rather, what she did, she selectively adopted some of the aspects of the Christian faith. This led to a rift with Sister Geraldine. That's why I told you that she had a long but difficult relationship with Sister Geraldine all her life. In December 1885, Pandita Ramabai received a letter. And this letter from Dr. Rachel Bodley. Dr. Rachel Bodley, she was the dean of a medical college of Pennsylvania, which is located in Philadelphia in United States of America. Dr. Rachel invited Pandita Ramabai that could you please attend the graduation of Ramabai's distant cousin, Anandibai Joshi. In the year 1886, when Ramabai arrived in the United States, she was received and perceived as an internationally renowned advocate for Indian women's advancement. She gave a first speech on 12th March 1886, and she obtained immediate success among the American people who admired her personality, admired her mission. In the year 1889, Pandita Ramabai arrived in Bombay. Less than a month after her arrival, Ramabai was able to open her residential school for upper caste women, primarily widows. The institution, the residential school, Sharda Sadan, or Home of Learning. This was inaugurated on 11th of March, 1889. And it gained a lot of publicity and recognition in local newspapers of Bombay as well as Pune. This institution was the first one of its kind in India because it was opened for Brahmin women, widows, but also admitted unmarried girls. The institution offered regular school education, but also remarkably vocational training like teachers training, nursing, etc. In fact, the opening of this residential school was praised by Ramabai's critic, Bal Gangadhar Tilak as well. Bal Gangadhar Tilak said that today our society has a great need for women like Pandita Ramabai. So in fact, the harshest critic of Pandita Ramabai, Bal Gangadhar Tilak is now praising her. The toughest event that touched Pandita Ramabai's life was her daughter Manorama's unexpected and sudden deterioration of health. The year was 1919, the summer of 1919. Probably due to her hectic work activity, she was physically exhausted. She was also suffering from a severe heart condition. So she was hospitalized as well. Despite the treatments, Manorama's condition got increasingly worse. So she had to be taken back to the hospital where she died. She died on 24th July, 1921. She had always been her mother's right hand, an affectionate and devoted daughter, a loyal 
and reliable helper in her mother's mission. In June 1882, Pandita Ramabai published her first Marathi book titled Stri Dharm Niti, or if we translate it in English, means Morals for Women, which she dedicated to her late husband and to her fellow country women. But in this book, Ramabai surprisingly adopted the position of a male reformer, telling women how to perform their social roles social roles of wives and mothers. She also gave some pieces of advice on how to prepare for marriage and to become a good wife and a good mother. We discussed Ramabai's visit to the United States. The most meaningful event which marked her American period is the publication of High Caste Hindu Woman. It was originally written in Marathi. Later on, it was translated into English. The year was 1887, which rapidly sold 10,000 copies within a year. This book can also be considered as the unofficial Indian feminist manifesto. There are seven chapters in this book. Fourth chapter, very interesting chapter, is titled Women's Place in the Religion and society. A series of cruel proverbs which were commonly used by the society. These proverbs are then listed by Ramabai so that her audience could grasp how common, how socially acceptable is cruelty against women. What does that mean? Some proverbs are commonly used. They are so commonly used that we miss the inherent gender bias in them. Ramabai listed some of them in her book to explain to her audience how acceptable cruelty against women is in the society. One such proverb is this, in the form of questions and answers. What's the question? Question is, what is cruel? Answer, the heart of a viper. Question. What is more cruel than that? Answer, the heart of a woman. Question, what is the cruelest of all? Answer, the heart of a sunless, penniless widow. That's how these cruel proverbs are depicting the cruel life of women in the society. Ramabai was an influential figure, an inspiration for many. The British colonial government of India awarded her Kesare Hind, this medal for her distinguished public service. The government of India too recognized her contribution by issuing a commemorative stamp on 26th October 1989, recognizing her contribution towards women's advancement. Furthermore, a road in Mumbai is named in her honor the road Pandita Ramabai Mark. But after the death of her daughter Manorama, Ramabai was now completely alone in the world, with no relatives alive, without her precious only daughter. She was able to endure the painful loss of her daughter Manorama for less than a year. And on 5th April 1922, after a period of illness and overwork, she died, died just a few days before her 64th birthday, the life of Pandita Ramabai Saraswati. For more such videos, download Baiju's exam prep app now.